Hello and welcome to the 2017 St Helens North Candidates Debate. Coming to you from Hope Academy, hosted by Year 7, 8, 9 and 10. First, we'd like to thank all the audience for coming and thank the candidates for coming as well. well. Now, we'd like to introduce each candidate. First, Jackson Ng for the Conservatives. <laughs> Rachel Parkinson, Green Party. <laughs> Conor McGinn, Labour. <laughs> Tom Morrison, Liberal Democrats. And finally, Peter Pears for the UK Independence Party. First of all, one of our students has created an opinion poll survey, which we'll now like to play. Good morning, my name is Tegan, and I am here to bring you the results of our opinion polls here in Newton. After sorting through the piles of sheets, we have found that males and females have completely different voting attitudes. For example, according to females, education was an extremely important issue in British politics. However, males rated health as the most significant issue. Also, UKIP was the most popular party with males. However, Labour took the women's vote with 109 votes. For our age group, under 18s, Education was the most important sector in politics. This was definitely expected and it would be interesting to hear how the candidates react to this. How will their policies affect us? Thank you. Our first topic today is health. We've also created another short video which explains the topic. Hello, today I'll be talking to you about health. In our recent student survey, we have found that 25 to 49 year olds think that health is one of the most important issues. Most 25 to 49 year olds also think that Labour is the best party for health. Recently, people have been worried about not being able to get a hospital bed and having to wait to see their GP, surgery being delayed and much more. People are saying that parties need to address this sooner before it gets worse. To do all this we need money and to know where we will get it, we will also need more NHS nurses and bigger hospitals. Mental health is another big issue, especially for younger people as they are still growing. We must start to raise more awareness for mental health to prevent bullying. Now we'd like to each ask each of the candidates for an opening statement on health. Conor McGinn. In December 2015, I was asked by the local NHS Trust and the Clinical Commissioning Group, which is responsible for health services in St Helens, to come and meet them to discuss the difficulties they would face during winter because of the funding crisis in the NHS under the Tory government. They proposed cancelling non-urgent operations. They proposed ensuring that people were dealt with by their GPs. This was supposed to be a temporary arrangement. Imagine then last summer my surprise when, during August, our, our clinical commissioning group said it had a £13 million deficit that it was proposing cancelling all non-urgent operations. People in St Helens are being let down by the Conservative government. Our NHS is in crisis and only a Labour government can fix it and the crisis in social care. Thank you. Jackson and Ladies and gentlemen, it's very simple. The NHS can only be funded by a strong economy. I'm very proud of the fact that as a Conservative Party, we have protected and increased NHS budgets and got thousands more staff in hospitals. Across the North West, there are 1,429 more doctors and 1,100 um, more nurses since 2010. The Conservative Party will go further and we will increase NHS spending by £8 billion in real terms over the next five years. Thank you. Tom Morrison. Every election campaign, the NHS just gets kicked about like a political football. You'll have Labour saying they're the party of the NHS, and you'll have the Tories trying to defend their record. Well, I'm going to be straight with you. We need a tax rise to support the NHS, which is why the Liberal Democrats are going to increase income tax by one penny to make sure the NHS gets six billion pounds worth of funding and works for the many, not the few. Thank you. Rachel Parkinson. 
Uh, the Green Party, um, like most of the public, is uh, very concerned about the state of our NHS. Uh, and I was very surprised to hear you say that the Conservatives are supporting the NHS because they seem to be responsible for bringing about privatisation and many cuts, which obviously is affecting the whole country, not just St Helens. So the Green Party will put a, a very large cash injection into the NHS that's needed and they'll bring mental health care in line with physical health care and uh, you can, the Green Party will support the NHS and wants to, all public services to be uh, run by the public for the public and definitely no privatisation. Thank you. Finally, Peter Pears. Uh, the, the NHS is Britain's best loved public service and one of the benchmarks of our civilised values. UKIP will keep the NHS free at the point of delivery and increase funding by diverting £11 billion from the foreign aid budget and targeting it directly to health and social care. Successive Labour coalition and Tory governments have overloaded the NHS with red tape and allowed it to be abused as an international rather than national health service. The NHS is funded by the British people and should be for the British people. And the, the NHS desperately needs the funds and it, it will become to NHS England £9 billion by, a year by 2020, 2021-22 and then another £2 billion for social care will fully utilise the same we will make from the foreign aid budget. Thank you. Thank you. The first question in health is the privatisation of the NHS provides a lot of money but it also means that people worry that the NHS will no longer be free. What are your opinions on this and what will you do about it? Jackson. Well, um, I'll have to say, privatisation of the NHS happened under the last uh, Labour government. Um, but what the Conservatives will always ensure is that the NHS is well funded and it's free at the point of delivery. Um, well, of course, there'll be some you know, charities, um, such as the Macmillan Cancel Trust, which you know, would be well, very well placed, for example, to come in and to, um, to run certain parts of the NHS for us. But that does not mean it's really privatisation. It's still free at point of delivery. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Tom Morrison. The NHS represents everything that is brilliant about this country. By privatising the NHS, you're secluding people from a health care that is their right to have. Um, the Liberal Democrats won't privatise the NHS. And as I said in my opening statement, we'll keep it open to the many, not just the few. Because we should, this, the values that this country is based on is protecting its weakest not giving to its richest. Thank you. Conor again. Look, I'm very clear the NHS should be run for people and not for profit. <coughs> Under the last Labour government, Jackson, we had a brand new hospital built at Whiston. We had the lowest waiting times in history. We had more doctors and nurses working in the health service than at any time in the past. And this is not just about acute care and hospitals. I think we need to look at examples we've had here locally just a couple of weeks ago in Haydock. I opened a new medical centre where GPs working together with community pharmacies, which have suffered unprecedented cuts under your government, uh, provided a new service that would stop people from having to use our acute services. So we need to be smart about it, we need to be sensible about it, we need to be efficient and we need to have best practice. But the fundamental principle remains that the NHS was built by the people and it should be for the people. And I would just pick up on one thing. Peter said, in terms of the international nature of our NHS, I see that in the doctors and nurses who come here to work locally, who look after British people, who look after people in St Helens, and do an incredibly dedicated and difficult job under the most enormous pressure. Thank you. Rachel Parkinson. Yeah, um, all of my family work for the NHS. So my, my sister's a nurse in the Royal in Liverpool, and my other sister is a physiotherapist. So I'm aware of how hard they're having to work. They, my sister hasn't had a, a lunch break during her shifts for about four years, and the hospitals at the moment are running because the staff are so dedicated. If it was a private company, they probably would have all left by now because of the conditions are so hard for them. So we've got to remember that the NHS is great, but what is the NHS? It is the service provided by the nurses, the doctors, the physiotherapists, and everybody that works in the hospitals, and they do a fantastic job. They haven't had a pay rise for several years, and they just work harder, do add extra hours, so, of course, we've got to put the funding into that. We've got to 
let the doctors and the nurses and the people that know that are in the position to know how it should be run and what they need. We've got to listen to them. We mustn't spend millions of pounds having so-called experts that aren't doctors or nurses coming in, getting paid a lot of money to change things and just wasting the money. So the Green Party would put the doctors and the nurses and the health professionals in uh, charge of our NHS so it can continue to run as it has done and hopefully much better than it is at the current moment. Thank you. Peter Pears. Uh, UKIP will keep the, the National Health Service. They will not privatise it. We want to ban, ban Labour dodgy NHS deals. Between 1997 and 2010, Tony Blair and Gordon Blair Brown contracted private syndicates of hedge funds managers, bankers and big property developers to design, build and finance new hospitals and run non-clinical services. These syndicates charge interest rates so high you might as well call the scheme buy one hospital, pay for seven. These private finance initiatives, PFI deals, are fin financed 11.8 billion worth of new build and will ultimately cost the NHS 79 billion. 75% of the syndicates involved are based offshore, so they don't, do not even pay UK taxes on these enormous profits. Labour is, is not the party of the NHS. Labour is the party that allowed the wealthiest in our society to laugh all the way to the bank at the expense of the NHS. UKIP will end the use of PFI contracts within the NHS. Thank you all for your answers. Now we'd like to invite Tom Morrison to the chat room, please. Good morning and thank you for joining me. <clears throat> I'm Jess and today I'd like to get to know a bit more about you. So, why Lib Liberal Democrats? So, I got involved in politics when I was about 15. Um, I helped uh, a local councillor uh, where I was from. Uh, his name is David Bruce, and he was just a, a really fantastic guy. Uh, he would be, every night, he would go out and knock on doors. All the residents knew him. Uh, but I found the most thing about him was that um, he uh, had impaired eyesight. And, uh, and regardless of this, he would make sure that he was out every night he would speak to voters, and he was a Liberal Democrat. And that's what I loved about the Liberal Democrats, is that we're not one of these parties that just gets stuck in Westminster and, and kind of, you know, in the Westminster bubble, but we're a party that actually represents local people and takes the issues that they're concerned with every day and helps to try and fix them. And um, what was your dream job as a child? Uh, I wanted to be a Hollywood actor. And, like, what made you change your mind? Uh, I realised I was terrible at acting. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, what is your next step from being our local MP? Um, well, being your local MP would just be an absolute dream. Um, and I don't think there is a next step for there. The next step is, I assume, would just be working with the community and getting the, the services and uh, representing you people are like, absolutely fantastic. The people here, just, it, would be, it would be an absolute dream. Okay, well, thank you for chatting with me today, but I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the NHS is saying it's underfunded and they are expected to do too much. They say that immigrants are a quarter of doctors in the NHS and one sixth of nurses. They aren't ruining the NHS, they are running it. What are your opinions on this? This section is open debate, which means any of, any of you can jump in at any time. Thank Chris you. Jackson, please start. Well, I really admire um, our NHS staff and I pay tribute to all of them, especially what happened in Manchester. My sister is a junior doctor in Manchester, so she was involved in what happened. Um, coming from an immigrant background, I obviously will you know, encourage um, that we have immigration to this country, but obviously positive, correct immigration. We must ensure that our immigrant communities integrate and contribute to our society. Anybody else like to, uh, Anything bring to say? a point? I think it's clear that there are huge pressures on public services and the NHS in particular. Uh, when the Conservatives came to power, they cancelled Labour's uh, Migrant Impact Fund, which ensured that areas where there had been immigration, particularly as a result of EU enlargement, had funding to mitigate the pressure on some of those services. But fundamentally, the pressures in the NHS, the crisis in the NHS, is caused by uh, the lack of funding. Social care is a very good example of that. Here in St Helens, by 2020, we are going to have, even on the best model that can be run locally, 
a £21 million deficit in social care. That's going to have a huge impact on people here locally. And we don't have that much immigration in St Helens, so the pressures on our services are because local people in what is an, an area with an ageing population need those services. There are no excuses. We need a properly funded NHS that is providing the best possible care it can to people who need it, and that's um, the way in which uh, we pay best sorry, tribute to our, Thank you. To our staff. Uh, Rachel, would you like to join uh, in the chat room, please? Can I talk about it? Uh, we're just going to do the chat room for a moment, and then uh, we can go on to the next topic. Hello. Hi. Good morning, and thank you for joining me. I'm Jess, and today I'd like to get to know a bit more about you. So, um, what was your dream job as a child? Uh, when I was a child, oh, I think I had, uh, when I was under under 12, I had lots of ideas that uh, uh, would change daily. Yeah. So, like, what made me to change your mind to become a politician? Well, I'm a teacher, um, and for the, I'm so very concerned about the, the future that we're, we're making in this country. It's, it's completely different to when I was your age. Um, and the biggest crisis that we're facing now is to... Uh, with our green belt and we've got fracking and this is what woke me up and I realised I cannot do nothing while this is happening and you'll find that there's a lot of uh, middle aged ladies like myself that think the same and we've been out campaigning um, going to lectures uh, giving meetings and trying uh, to raise awareness of this danger because uh, are you, have you heard of the anti-fracking nanas? No. Oh, <laughs> well, we're a bunch of uh, nanas and mothers that are trying to uh, keep the uh, air clean uh, for the future because obviously it's got to such a point that we can't just sit and do nothing. So that's why uh, I joined the Green Party because it was the only party that was against fracking and thankfully that's changed now. Um, but the crisis to our environment with global warming is the worst thing that we face and it has to be dealt with now. We cannot make it worse um, and that's why uh, I am uh, standing yeah. as a candidate. Um, well, thank you for chatting with me today, but that's all the time that we have. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Uh, do any of you have a final word on health? Yes, please, me. Uh, the reason we've got so many foreign doctors and nurses is because we're not training the staff. They're doing a great job, these, these people from, from abroad. Um, UK will want to raise the cap on medical school places, which will help to deliver 10,000 additional GPs. The profession needs by 2025. 20, we will also, also introduce a new funding arrangement incentivising doctors to work in geographic, geogra geographical areas most in need. However, GP, GPs are grappling with heavy workloads and over-regulations. Now, we need to give the nurses and respect and recognition they deserve. The NHS needs 24,000 more nurses and 3,500 more midwives. Yet again, potential students are being turned away, tens of thousands of them every year. UKIP will increase the number of nurse training placements, reinstate, reinstate funding for bursaries to cover nursing with Withry and allied professionals, tuition and accommodation costs, and cover the retraining of nurses of taking career breaks. Uh, thank you. So, moving on to our next topic, which is economy. And we have a short clip explaining what this topic is about. Hi, I'm Polly. I'm going to talk to you about the economy. Many uh, working class people are having worries about not being able to afford basic things like food or clothing or being able to pay basic bills, electricity and gas. Some of the major things facing Britain's economic stance. Benefits. Females under 18 think it's the most important thing. Interestingly, for men at the, same, at the same age thought it was the fourth most important issue. Tax. As tax increases, it will be more difficult for people to live a, a healthy and proper life. Females under 18 think it's a very important issue. And men 25 to 49 think it, tax is an average problem, but think the Labour Party can solve it. Families... Uh, in 25 to 49 age group thought the uh, uh, economy the biggest issue and the election they felt Labour had the best policies to solve the issues. Thank you. So uh, can we have the opening states for economy? So Tom Morrison please. 
The Liberal Democrats are going to rebalance our economy. We'd invest in large infrastructure projects to create jobs and stimulate growth. And we'd have to reform our tax system short those with the broadest shoulders, such as multinational corporations, pay their fair share. Fairness has to be at the heart of any economic policy. Helping people get into work, but in, more importantly, the most vulnerable people in our society need to be properly protected and supported. That's what the Liberal Democrats are going to do. Colin again. Nationally, it's a very difficult picture. This morning it was announced that households have an average of £14,000 debt, inflation is rising and wages are stagnating and people here in the community feel that acutely. But I'm optimistic locally about what we can do. Just a few weeks ago uh, I visited a new logistics academy opened by St Helens College in Parr. We have excelled at science, technology, engineering and maths. And the school here is a testament to that. It's our 150th anniversary in St Helens next year. We drove the Industrial Revolution. There's no reason why we can't be at the heart of a new northern revival. But that, to do that, we need investment, we need jobs, and we need infrastructure improvements. And that's what I'll fight for if I'm re-elected. Thank you. Jackson Ng. Well, everybody knows that Brexit's happening. Um, it's going to be one of the most difficult times um, this country has ever faced. Therefore, we need a strong and stable leadership to get us through these negotiations so that we can secure our growing economy and to continue to attract overseas business investments. Now is not a time for amateurs who propose to raise taxes to the highest levels since 1949 and to nationalise huge chunks of British industry, which they haven't told us how they're going to pay for, which is why, really, we need to vote Conservative and to vote with Theresa May so she can lead us through these difficult times and to secure our growing economy. Uh, Peter Pears. Yes, uh, UKIP will inv invest in the N N NHS and care for the elderly. We will fund our schools, build more houses and re rebuild our depleted armed forces. We will do this without adding a single penny to anybody's tax bill. Our cost of living package will also save households £400 a year. UKIP will make full use of the new economic freedoms we will gain when we, we, gain when we leave the EU. The new policies we would introduce on Brexit Britain will be designed to help cut the cost of living for working people. Adequate funding for public service and revived communities are deserved by our EU membership. And cracking down on corporate tax dodging, the public has every right to be angry when multinational corporations fail to make their proper contribution to Britain's running costs. PAYU is not voluntary and corporation tax should not be voluntary either. We will not let large companies get away with paying zero on negligible corporation tax. Thank you. That's okay. all we're afraid. That's okay. all we time for is a short debate. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, now we're going to go on to uh, our first question. Oh. I apologise to Rachel, but oh. we've simply not at the time. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted um, to tell everyone about the, uh, the Green Party has a policy to create a million jobs this is throughout the country of, with green investment, uh, green technologies, um, and it can make a big difference here locally because um, we'd like to uh, link with uh, Pilkington's Glass to get uh, triple glazing in all the homes, which will reduce the bills. And we've got a lot of plans for a new way of uh, creating money without damaging the environment or putting more traffic on our roads. But, oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, our first question is, how is your party aiming to get rid of debt and close the deficit? Uh, Tom Morrison. The Liberal Democrats, when we were in government in uh, between 2010 and 2015, um, we had to make some really hard choices, but we took the deficit reduction, uh, reduction seriously, and we're going to carry on doing that. We will aim by 2025 to reduce the interest payments completely, so then we're in control of our own budgets, and that's a commitment that we will have. Uh, Colin McGinn. During the 2010-2015 Parliament, we proposed cuts to VAT and a huge economic stimulus through investment. The Tories said that they would eliminate the deficit first by 2015, then by 2020, and now they're saying they might get around to it sometime between now and 2025. Look, what's clear is we need to put money back in people's pockets. We need to stimulate uh, the economy here locally. We need to ensure small and medium enterprises and businesses have support. Jackson talked about tax increases. The average wage here 
is between 23 and 25,000. 98% of people in St Helens North won't pay a penny more tax under Labour. The richest will, and I think it's actually all right that I'm standing up for the 97% and you're standing up for the 3%. Jackson. Well, it's all very well, Colin, talking about you know what Labour has done, but let's not remember, let's not forget. You know, since the Conservatives came into coalition government in 2010, we inherited this irresponsible public spending that the Labour government has given us. Sound money and responsible public finances are essential to keeping our economy strong. We cannot do anything as a nation without strong public and responsible finances, whether it's looking after our elderly or funding our military, something I know the Labour Party is not very keen on. We've worked very hard since 2010 to get public spending under control, and de the deficit now is down by three quarters as a share of our economy. To 52 billion pounds. Still, down three quarters, more than Labour has ever done. But there's still clearly more to do. But there is clearly still more to do. And over the next five years, I think it is. under the strong, stable leadership of Theresa May, we'll continue to bear down the deficit while protecting and spending things like the NHS, school, and defence. And it's your Labour leader that wants to borrow more. And he, in fact, he says that you, hmm. your, your Labour, your, your shadow chancellor also says that we're not spending enough. They want to borrow more money. But you are, you are borrowing. You are borrowing. There is, there is a deficit, and the, and, the, there is a deficit and the debt is growing. Responsibly. But what are you borrowing for? But the economy all is people growing. Have seen all people, well, the economy isn't growing. The, the, the economy just grew by 0.2%. 0.2% when it was predicted to grow by 0.3%. Yes, something called Brexit happened. Okay. Yeah. Well, but I thought, I thought I, a strong I, I, and stable government under Theresa May would take us through Brexit and deliver a strong well, economy. Well, it will do, but we can't control the global economy. We can't control the markets. I know Labour likes to do that by but if you can't control, if, if you can't control the global economy or the markets, why was it a Labour government in the UK's fault that a global financial crash happened? Well, it is, because you overborrow. So it's not your fault that it, the global it's, it's, market has meant that we have slower growth than predicted, but it was a Labour well, government's it, it, fault it's that we had clear a that global because of, financial because crash. Because of what happened with Brexit, the country votes to go out, something that we have to respect, that the global economy has changed. Mm -hmm. you know, the EU I has think changed. you have to remember that before Brexit, we've just been, uh, the deficit has been getting larger under the Tories. And also, the important thing is, I think a lot of people, like myself, is like, why, when you want to save money, do you take it from the poorest members of society? We've got this biggest gap that I've seen in my lifetime um, in, in England. And I mean, when I've been campaigning around Newton, there are people living in homes, but they can't afford to heat them. They're still getting the, uh, having to pay the bedroom tax, even though there's not smaller houses for them to go to. And it's just not acceptable. Poverty has increased enormously under this Tory government, and you cannot, if you, if you ignore that, it's, you can't expect anybody to trust you. We've got over a million people using food banks, and in, in St Helens and in Newton and Willows, I met, in one hour of door knocking, I met six households that cannot afford to buy food. That should not be happening in uh, the, the country that we've got today. Meanwhile, we see the richest echelons of our society getting more. And the Tories have got second homes, they've got ridiculous amounts of money. Of course it makes sense to put a, a, a higher tax on higher earners. Not higher earners like 30 or 40,000 a year, but higher earners over... I, I just want to say three things Sorry. about locking in our economic oh, progress. No. Connor asked about our deficit. Well, it's actually gone down from 151.7 billion in 2009 to 2010 to 51.7 billion in 2016 2017. Employment is up 2.9 million since Labour yeah, but were in power. And also, our economy has grew 1.8% in real percentage but you know, Jackson, terms. I, could, I, could, I can read figures out from a sheet as well. well you asked yeah. these, what I, these figures what I, have, what, I, what I haven't heard you mention once thus far um, sorry, is the impact we, this has in St Helens. Thank you, sorry. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we don't, we don't have thank enough you. time. We don't have enough time. Jackson, thank you very much. Connor again, would you like to come to the chat room? Um, good morning and thank you for joining me. I'm Jess and today I would like to get to know you a bit more. Thank you, Jess. So, um, what are your aspirations in life? Uh, I think at the minute with a six-month-old and a three-year-old to try and be a good dad when you're doing a job that means you have to be away a lot and you have to work long hours to try and be happy and healthy and I think to try and to try and best represent people in St Helens in, uh, in the way that I've done in the last two years and the way that I hope to do over, over the next five years if elected. 
And um, what was your dream job as a child? I think once I realised a football career was out of the question because of a very serious lack of talent, uh, I settled on the view that it would be quite nice to be a postman, to get out and about and around and see different people in different places. Uh, I knock doors now for a different reason to ask people to vote for me, but I hope I've retained some of the spirit of that youthful aspiration to be a postie. Um, and why Labour? I think it resonates with the values I've had around public service, fairness, social justice, enabling people to get on while looking after people who need our help the most. Those are the things that I believe in. I think those are the things that people in our community in Newton and across St Helens believe in too, and that's why I'm very proud to have been the Labour MP here. Um, well, thank you for chatting with me today, but that's all the thank time you. we have. Thank you. Okay, yet another question. Tax loopholes are considered a huge issue in Britain by many people. How are you going to deal with this? Jackson, Again, this is an open debate. Tax Ta loopholes are considered a huge problem in Britain. Tax, Tax loopholes. Yeah. Uh, would you like to uh, make a point, anybody? Well, as a Conservative, I'm proud that in the last government, um, in 2005, 2000, no, 2010, 2010 coalition government, 2015 and 2015, 2017, Conservatives have done more to close more tax loopholes than any. Uh, for example, we introduced um, taxes on uh, larger properties, on offshore companies buying properties. Um, so I'm very proud of our record on tax loopholes. Thank you. Tom? Um, Yes, I've got to say that when the coalition government uh, were in power, we were very good at closing the tax loopholes. However, since a certain partner has walked away, the Conservatives <laughs> have forgotten that. Um, and instead, you've got multinational corporations diving away from paying their tax um, and, uh, and actually cheating the system. And when the, ch the system gets cheated, it's ordinary working people that get hit the hardest. So, yes, I would say between 10, 2010 and 2015, there was a good record, but that seems to have disappeared slightly since then. Thank you. Uh, sorry, we're going to have to move on to the next topic. Uh, the next topic is environment. We have another short clip. Environment is an ever-growing issue affecting all of us. But what is the impact on us? And what can we do about it? There's been a huge increase in fracking in the UK and it's been getting slowly closer to us. Fracking promotes fossil fuels, which are non-renewable and damaging to the environment. Greenbelt areas and agricultural land is on the decrease. This is because of urbanisation on a huge scale. This greenbelt space could be used for children to play, for example parks or play areas, or for native animals to be protected in national parks or reserves. But the main thing affecting us now and in the future is climate change. That's not something one party or one political policy can solve. It's something we must all face together. Thank you. Uh, do you all have a statement about environment? Yes. 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 Statement. Rachel? Would yes. You okay, so I'd like to thank Grace for those very pertinent comments about our environment. Now, the, as you can imagine with the Green Party, at, we are at, the environment is at the very heart of our manifesto. Um, we have 40,000 deaths in the UK uh, that are attributable to poor air quality. 40,000. And this is not something that any party can ignore. Okay? So, we need to make sure that we have no fracking. We need to get as much diesel traffic off the roads as we can. We certainly do not need to be building a logistics academy or filling the, the Newton and Willows area and the St Helens North area with warehouses and thousands of more uh, HGV lorry journeys. Thank we you. Oh, Thank sorry. You. Uh, Jackson? Well, the Conservatives of government have safeguarded, safeguarded our national green belt protection and increased protection of important green spaces. This is reinfer reaffirmed by our manifesto. Unlike your local Labour Party and the Lib Dems who want to concrete over your beautiful countryside, I will fight tooth and nail to protect it from them. Uh, Emma, can I interject here? Because the Tory party are no, all out I'm for shale, and they're just trying to frack everywhere. So, <laughs> just, Rachel, I'm, I'm just I'm need sorry, opening seat. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Connor? 
Look, I'm very clear. I want St Helens to be the best place to live, to work and to visit. I'm in favour of a brownfield first policy that protects the green belt. Uh, fracking is a bit of a red herring, I'm afraid, Rachel. We uh, Not only have we never had an application to frack within the borough of St Helens, there aren't even any uh, identifiable uh, sites. In terms of air quality, I couldn't agree more. We've had 100 deaths locally, and they happen to be in the poorest parts of the borough over the last year. What we need is a balanced local plan that encourages investment and jobs, protects our environment and wildlife, and ensures that people who live here can have a good quality of life and plenty of access to green space. Okay, thank you. Um, Peter Pearce, please. Hello, uh, the EU's common ag agricultural policy has damaged our countryside. The common fisher fish fisheries policy has devastated fish stocks around our coastline. The way the EU and our government embrace diesel to be proved to be disastrous, even fatal. The Water Framework Direct had led to serious flooding in many parts of the country by preventing river dredging. Repealing this directive will spare owners all, all, all the misery of flooding and exorbitant insurance pre premiums. Could I just uh, talk about... Could I just talk about... Okay. 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 Um, just, I'll just say quickly that um, with... Internationally, the, the election of Donald Trump and here with this Theresa May's hard Brexit charge, that we're in a real danger of losing out on the massive progress this country in particular has made in environmental issues. So the Liberal Democrats, we're determined that this is not going to happen and we're putting the environment front and centre of our agenda. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. We'd now like to invite Peter Pearce to the, uh, to the chat room. Um, good morning, thank you for joining me. I'm Jess and today I would like to get to know you a bit more. When did you realise you were interested in politics? Oh, I've always been interested in politics. I've always been sort of a Labour voter. I, I remember watching the elections when Harold Wilson was there many, many years ago. I'd stay up late on election night, uh, hopefully to see uh, the, the Labour Party win. Well, I stood as a, a local candidate in Billings where I lived there because I wanted to fetch sporting facilities uh, for, for the village there. Uh, bowling greens, tennis courts, all weather uh, pitches and things like that. Um, now, somebody asked me, said, why do you stand for the Labour Party? I said, no, I can't, I'm standing as an independent because I want to speak my own mind. If you're a member of the Labour Party, a Conservative Party, you've got to do what the group do. UKIP policy is, 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 is like me being independent. You've got to do what your, your, your voters want you to do, not what the party wants you to do. Um, Right, um, then I went on to, uh, why, why did they join UKIP? Did, did, did you want to know that? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, I voted Labour until sort of uh, a couple of years ago, actually, like, and uh, Tony Blair promised a referendum to the British public, and he reneged on it, wouldn't let us have, a, have, a, have a, a referendum. So I thought, right, stuff you, mate, I'm going to see this UKIP party. I saw Nigel Farage and thought, what a charismatic character that is. And obviously, we've gone out of uh, Europe, yeah. down to one man, really, that's gone um, out of Europe. Well, thank you for chatting with me today, but that's all the time that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next penultimate topic is foreign policy. We have another short clip to play. Foreign policy. It's how we communicate with our neighbouring countries. Each country has their own views and in each country different parties with abstract views. A main issue facing this country is immigration. We did a poll and results show that 15 males aged 25 to 49 feel that immigration and asylum are the most important issues facing us as a nation. In their opinion, conservative policies are the best to follow when considering these issues. Another issue is trade. Trade between countries is an extremely important issue our great nation faces on a daily basis. Trade issues occasionally dominate and are a continuing theme of the international scene, the global market, sweatshops, child labour and more are all major factors of trade. With trade as with much else we need to cooperate to change the world's for the better. This has been foreign policy. Thank you. So can we have a short 30 second uh, opening statements please? Well net trade Brexit is a huge part of our foreign policy and sadly our Labour and Lib Dem and Green opponents here are seeking to disrupt our negotiations with Europe. Ask yourself this, who do you want standing up for Britain 
across the table from in, in, in the EU negotiations. Theresa May, or a weak Labour leader, that our Labour candidate here doesn't even support himself. On foreign policy, I'm disgusted and disappointed to hear today that Jeremy Corbyn, um, a Labour candidate, is linking the foreign policy to terrorist attacks at home. He does not seem to understand these losers hate our values and not our foreign policy. And I'd like to hear how our Labour candidate here defends his Labour leader. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Tom? You know, Britain has produced some of the greatest artists, sportsmen and women, musicians in history. We've also invented the internet, we've invented the steam engine, and we even put a spaceship on an asteroid. We are best when we are a world player. However, history is in danger of disappearing. The Tories, supported by Labour and UKIP, want to, us to become isolated and drag us out of Europe. The Liberal Democrats will give you a say on the Brexit deal, and that is only fair. Defence and security is the first duty of any government. Uh, my record is clear. Uh, I supported the renewal of Trident. I support strong and properly equipped armed forces. There is no excuse whatsoever for terrorism or the kind of terrorism that we saw on the streets of Manchester. You know, being a member of Parliament, Jackson, is about taking responsibility for decisions you make, like the decision that I made to take military intervention against ISIS in Syria. That was a hard decision, but I stand over it because my duty as a member of Parliament representing St Helens North is to ensure people here are safe and secure, and as a member of a national parliament to secure that our country is safe and secure, and I can never make any apology for that, nor will I. Thank you, Connor. Peter? Uh, Brexit means uh, stepping, stepping boldly out into a global world and as an important actor on the world stage, free to pers pursue a foreign policy, policy prior prioritising British interests and the security of our nation, UKIP will ensure the safety of wealth and prosperity of our British citizens while meeting our international responsibilities. Now, we've just been talking about uh, uh, terrorism. Obviously, there was one in, in Manchester the other day. Uh, one of my neighbour's grandchildren was in, in, in the bomb in the bomb there. She went to pick her daughter up, the bomb went off, and the mother went in looking, looking for the, the child. Hopefully, they, they, were all, they all got, they all were safe. Thank you. Yeah, I think for the Green, with the Green Party, I, I think we need, we've lost a lot by leaving the EU. If we do have a hard Brexit, obviously we've lost the, the free trade, uh, the freedom of movement, the job opportunities for the young people, but also I think the Europe is, is our natural uh, allies in the world. So personally, I wish that we uh, hadn't, uh, the vote hadn't gone that way. I feel like, and I know that some people have contacted me that did vote to leave, and really it was just more a general dissatisfaction, and now they really regret it. Uh, thank you. I think we're weaker out of Europe, not stronger. Right. Thank you. Uh, first question is that Brexit is a very serious issue. What are your opinions on this and uh, can we keep the answers short because again we have uh, not enough time. <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be very brief. Uh, I campaigned for a Remain vote. The vote locally here in St Helens uh, was to leave the European Union and the vote nationally was too. I respected that. It was a direct mandate given to me by the people so I voted to trigger Article 50. My priority now is getting the best Brexit for St Helens, for local jobs, for local workers' rights, for local businesses and for trade and investment that we need here to grow our local economy. I'll just say that's all well and good but the, the people that should have the say on any final Brexit deal is the people of this country, not the politicians in Westminster. Now, Theresa May is going to go in and negotiate on behalf of you for a good deal, apparently. I don't think she should have the final say on any of that offer. I think it's the people of Great Britain that should have a say on the final deal. And that's what I'll be fighting and, for. And what if you don't like what they've said about that? Because you didn't like the result of the last referendum, as I didn't. But if you don't like the result of the next referendum that you hold, will you have another one on that as well? No, no. What we've said is we will hold a second referendum on the deal. Okay. And if people then decide to go with the deal, that's fine. Look, that's I, think we'll people, I think people have made the decision. Their voice has been heard clearly, and we you, need you to get on Green, with Brexit. You and the Green Party don't believe in the democracy. You've had your chance, and the people voted I'm to not, go out. I'm not going to take any you can't have a second opinion. You can't have another vote. Ladies and gentlemen, the, in combination yeah. of the chaos. Look, just yeah. vote Theresa May, vote Conservative. Give us... Conserve the party, a strong hand in negotiating with the EU, so we can get the best deal for I the country the as possible. I think the EU made it clear that they Why should they give anything to people that want to leave? And why are you underselling our country? We have a lot to give. We have a lot to exactly. be proud of. So we have a lot of things they people. need access to, like our intelligence is services, which are very, very well regarded. Is it, is, it, is it strong and stable that the pound is slumping? Is it strong and stable that our supposed allies across the water are, are selling off security information to the, 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 the first 
media outlet that wants it. That is, that is exactly what's happening because we have walked away from the EU. We are, we are slowly, slowly feeling the price of that. And exports are going yeah, through the roof, And we'll be at the mercy of the highest bidder. We're leaving the EU, but we're not leaving strong Europe. Strong environmental laws, strong human rights laws, and we've lost them, and now we've got a hole to fill. But also, why lose a market? Over 78% of under 25 something called democracy. voted to stay It's something called democracy, EU. and you respect we've the results of a referendum. Future. You result the respect of a referendum. So let's, have a democratic so democratic let's have a referendum on the deal. That's democracy. Let's do it. Regretted voting to leave. Do you have anything else to say on the matter? Do you have anything else to say on this matter? Can I talk something about it? Brexit? Well, the choice is very simple, really, on the 8th of June. Strong, stable, conservative, Theresa, Tem Theresa May's team, or coalition of chaos. Uh, Brexit, you're talking about hard Brexit, soft break Brexit, Theresa May's red, white and blue bre Brexit. There's only one Brexit, and that's UKIP's Brexit. Leave we the... all want to be a part of that. <laughs> and it's the full Monty. So, please vote UKIP. All right, thank you. Um, another question. Terrorism has recently become a very serious issue. With the terror threat being raised to critical, how are you planning to deal with this? Um, Rachel. I think the first thing... Um, to, to remember with uh, the terrorism is that although it's it was it's horrific uh, what happened uh, in Manchester the other day, of course, and it's also horrific what happens anywhere in the world mm. when people are bombed. And we've got to remember that um, thousands, millions of people have been killed sometimes by the weapons that are produced and sold from this country. So it's a very it's a simplistic issue. And I think it's important to remember, I mean, it's simplistic to say um, that we need police on the streets. If there'd been police with guns on the streets on Monday, it wouldn't have stopped what happened. We've, so we've got to concentrate on uh, having good intelligence and really deal with the issue. The, one of the things is that all the parties seem scared to deal with the issue. And I think a lot of people that have spoken to me, it's like, who is our enemy? Who should we fear? And it's like, there's, we need um, straightforward, honest dealings in politics so that people and deal, can understand that we need that you and I have a good idea of what's really happening and also... Uh, so that other countries can trust us in negotiations. Right. We have to thank avoid you. terrorist acts because yes, it's you. too late yes. afterwards oh, to you. deal with them. Sorry, can I Tom? just say that um, I live in Manchester and um, uh, I have a couple of friends that were, were uh, caught up in the, in the chaos um, last, uh, this week. But what has absolutely tested my resolve and made me more proud is the fact that after this we were more willing to adopt a tolerant and open society, which is exactly what those losers want to end. So the thing is, we've got to do any reaction we have to do has got to hold our values as an open, tolerant, democratic nation. And we can't resort to any knee-jerk actions that are going to do our own country down, because that is what they want. I, I, agree, with a lot, I agree with a lot of that. Uh, look, the decision to, or the recommendation to raise the threat level to critical was made independently, and the Prime Minister was absolutely right to do that, to protect the safety and security of the country and people who live in it. Rachel, I'm sorry, I just can't agree with you. Uh, Islamic jihadists and fundamentalists murder people in Nigeria and Burkina Faso and Mali, and places where there has been no involvement or intervention by the West. I don't believe that Britain is to blame for what happened in Manchester on Monday. I believe the That's person. And the, I, I believe I the person. I believe some the events that happened, just as horrific events I believe, have happened at our hands elsewhere. We mustn't think that I, I believe, it's more important that what happens to us than what happens to other well, my, people's well, my, children. My, my primary duty is to protect and uh, and and. Uh, look after the security of people in St Helens and the government is for people in the UK. But there is no justification for it. There is no justification for it. There is no contextualisation of it. I don't uh, think anybody it. justifies we, we, that. We have to be clear um, and we have to be strong and robust in our, in our response to it. Right. Uh, is Islamic State, the so-called Islamic State, I do not have an answer myself at this moment in time. But in 1993, I was sat at home in Billings watching the sports program Grandstand. The program was inter in in interrupted by announcement that a bomb had gone off in Warrington Town Centre. 
Uh, I was in a bit of a state of panic because uh, I've got lots of relatives that live in Warrington and no one was shopping the town. It was Mother's Day, Tim Parry, 12 years old, and three-year-old Jonathan Ball, Ball were blown up by the IRA. Bronwyn Vickers also died. Two innocent children. On another occasion, the gas works were blown up in Warrington. A police officer was shot by the IRA. Um, now, obviously, we've got the peace process now, and that's very good. But I noticed Jeremy Cormie wouldn't condemn the IRA, but I condemn the IRA. I don't know about you, Connor. Absolutely. I mean, look, uh, I'm very proud to have a relationship with the Warrington Peace Centre. If one good thing came out of the awfulness and horror uh, that was the Warrington bomb, it was the fact that we have established a peace centre that is now working directly with... Uh, with victims in Manchester. My record in this is uh, very clear, Peter, and always has been. I feel very lucky as a beneficiary of the peace process, the work that the Labour government did to ensure that people like me had a chance that those before me didn't have, and I would never seek to attempt to politicise that. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, when we look at Northern Ireland and the example of the peace process there, that we are thankful, that we are grateful, that we learn the lessons of it and ensure that we never go back to it. Okay, As a Conservative, what I would say is we are the traditional party that supports our armed forces and our security services, and I cannot pay tribute to how they've handled the situation. Just today, we've you know, understood that you know, MI5 is working at you know, investigating about 500 possible terror, terrorist threats, and therefore we do need a government and a political party that will stand behind them and support them. And I'm not sure we get that with a Labour government. Do you, given what your leader says? I think it's my name on the ballot here, Jack. But you're standing for the Labour Party. I you're standing, you're I know, standing for the Labour Party. I know that you're. I know that you're. I mean, how, can you stand for, know, how can you stand for something? I know that you know, you're. And, and well, I stand, Labour I stand, endorse you. I stand on my record. I stand on my Labour views. Party policies and, I stand as and your a, leader. I stand on my record. I stand on my views, and it's my name on the ballot, Jackson. I know Maybe you should be standing as independent. I know that you're. I know that you're. Maybe you should stand as independent. I know that you do not agree with your leader. You do not support his policies. Why are you standing for the Labour Party? I know that you stand as an independent. I know that you are entitled to do as local candidate, albeit from 300 miles away in yeah, South you're, you're Buckinghamshire, Jeremy, Jeremy but Corbyn's it's your name on the ballot and it's my name on the ballot and I've been very clear, very robust, very vociferous in what I've said today. I've been a community focused, independently minded MP an and, that, and, that's, what people, an and that's what people in this constituency want and that's what people in this constituency respect. They don't respect sound bites, they don't respect uh, they don't respect playing politics with what are really important issues. They respect someone who works on the ground, who gets things done locally, and who represents I, I them well. I, 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 I do not agree with you that raising Jeremy Corbyn's sorry. position on our defence, our military, and our security forces to, is playing politics. Sorry. Because the defence of the realm sorry. is very important. I think, I think, it's uh, I think Connor's sorry. absolutely right. It was this week. We Tom. should not be paying politics. We should have a calm, measured appraisal Tom, of thank this you. and start working. Well, Jeremy Corbyn speaking. Thank you. We need to stop our this. Policy to what's happened Please. in Manchester. Uh, Please, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so we're going to move on to our next and final topic, which is education, and we have a short video which will explain this topic. Hello, my name is Kian Grimes, and I'm going to outline the issues of education that I will cover. Firstly. In 2013, the initial plan was to make tuition fees £7,500, but now they are an appalling £9,250. The bare minimum of a student debt is £27,000, which is increasing per annum. Furthermore, a study has shown that primary school children receiving free school meals display an average advent of two months compared to those who do not. This may seem shocking to you, but only 65% of people think children should receive free school meals. Yes, only 65%. For some lucky individuals, grammar schools can be an undoubted benefit. However, for those less fortunate, it can be a, a disadvantage in life. Only 10% of students are accepted into grammar schools. Many people disagree with grammar schools and only a select few feel they should be a prominent place in education. Uh, before we have all, all your opening statements, we'd like to invite Jackson to the chat room. Good morning and thank you for joining me. I'm Jackson today, I'd like to know a bit more about you. So what was your dream job as a child? Uh, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer and I ended up being a lawyer, surprisingly. And. Um, What's the next step from being our local MP? Well, the first thing I want to do, uh, if elected, is to make sure 
that the sound of St Helens North, um, its representative in Westminster, is um, truly heard. And to ensure that Brexit works for St Helens North, I would also fight tooth and nail um, uh, against the local Labour Party and Council's Green Belt plans, um, taking it to the Secretary of State if possible. And uh, what are your aspirations in life? Well, to be elected as MP for St Helens North would um, be a great privilege. And um, why do you pick Conservatives? Well, um, growing up, sort of values such as hard work, education, family, entrepreneurship has always resounded um, in my childhood. And in the Conservative Party, sort of, I've looked at all the different political parties. It was the party that sort of had the most sort of overlapping values as what I was brought up to believe. And, and I joined the Conservative Party in 2009. I campaigned in 2010, 2012. And I stood in Liverpool Riverside in the last general election, and here I am again. I'm committed to ensuring that you know, these values are shared across our country. Um, well, thank you for chatting with me today. But that's all the time that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so our question, uh, your opening statement, sorry. Uh, Rachel, Rachel, please. Um, uh, I'm a teacher and I, uh, I really like the Green Party's education policy. Um, it's going to uh, address the crisis of the teacher workload. This is what, um, and we're going to abolish Ofsted and reform the curriculum so that it is pupil centred and freeing up teachers to teach. Um, uh, a large number of teachers go through all the expensive training that they've had to borrow the money now, which also the Green Party has always said that they would abolish tuition fees. Um, and uh, so many are leaving because they want to teach, they're gifted for teaching, but all they have to do is fill in forms, check tech boxes, and it's really spoiling education. So the education policy from the Green Party has been written by teachers, head teachers and students right. and education okay. psychologists. So it's we by people who know need what needs to be done. Thank you. Look, we have some fantastic uh, schools locally. I've been very privileged to visit lots of them over the last two years. Uh, but the truth is that we face some real difficulties here. I think the government is letting down children, young people, parents, uh, teachers and, and schools like Hope, the new funding formula, which will see places like uh, Baconsfield, where Jackson lives, get more money for their schools, will see £9 million taken from schools here in St Helens, an average of £386 per pupil. Now here at Hope, it's nearly half a million pounds. It could be 11 teaching jobs, and it's the equivalent of 416 pounds per pupil. So you're standing here before the pupils, before the teachers, and before the staff of Hope Academy today, yes. Jackson. Um, I think you should justify that yeah, to them. No, it's very simple, Connor. Um, you know, a vote for me, you know, it effectively secures a strong and stable leadership. We're required to take a strong economy forward. You know, without a strong economy, we won't have public services like education. And I'm proud of the fact that since 2010. We've had more than 1.8 million pupils being taught in good or outstanding schools. Now, I'm also proud of the fact that the Conservative Party will increase the overall schools budget by four billion pounds by 2022, and ensure that no school has to has to face budget cuts as a result of new so you, fair funding formula. You're guaranteed. I'll do my best. If elected, I'll do my best. It's, it's I'll opening statements. It's to speak opening up statements. Not, not in Parliament. Thank All right, you, thank Tom. you. Tom. The Conservatives have overseen huge cutbacks to education, and instead of fixing that, they're driving forward with this divisive play on grammar schools, which is just going to restrict the learning potential for young people. It's vital that all young people can achieve their potential and grow. And that's why the Liberal Democrats are going to invest £7 billion into education, triple the early years pupil premium, and roll out the free school meals programme. Thank you. Thank you. Peter. Peter. Uh, political interference in education has failed children. We are tumbling down the International Education League tables and rising up the ranks for youth and unemployment. UKIP will be introduced grammar schools, invest in vocational education and technical training, scrap tuition fee fees for the STEM subjects and prepare our young people for the world of, of work. UKIP's approach to ed education is where no child is held back and where education is as responsible, responsive as possible to individual needs. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Our first question, and uh, only question, uh, about education is uh, many students find having the minimum of £27,000 of debt very difficult. What will your party do about this, Connor? We've made a pledge to abolish student fees. Uh, I just this year cleared my uh, student debt. It was cumbersome, it was a burden. Uh, it affected my ability to live and work when I left uh, university. But I think as well as that, we need to look at it across the piece. I think we need to look at encouraging people both into university and into other educational routes, whether through apprenticeship or vocational education too. University is not the be all and end all, but bright students, poor students who, like me, could be the first in their family to go to university, deserve the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Jackson? Well, it's all very well saying that, you know, you abolish tuition fees, etc. Um, how are you going to pay for it? Well, we've been clear that we would pay for it through a corporation tax raise. Corporation tax is 19% at the minute. We've pledged to increase that to 20 Six percent, because we think it's important to give our young people the best start in life, N not just uh, by the time they reach uh, university. And when the corporation stop employing start, young people, shoe start because of the corporation tax increase, how would you put them into jobs? Well, look, we've been very clear that we need a plan for jobs and investment locally. Our college uh, here is one of the best in the country across a whole range of areas. And what I want to encourage people into are skilled jobs, sustainable jobs, not the type of low wage, zero hours, unsustainable jobs that we've seen blossom under a Conservative government over the last seven years. Um, take it from a party that knows, yeah? Don't promise to abolish tuition fees if you can't cost it. And at the moment, everything that the Labour Party is saying is they're going to deal with corporation tax and that will pay for this. I'm starting to think that Jeremy Corbyn's found a, a magic money tree somewhere and I wish you'd tell me where it is. Um, the biggest uh, restriction for people going to university at the moment is not the tuition fees. It's actually being able to afford to live at university, which is why we're going to re reinstate the maintenance grants for the poorest students to ensure that cost of living are certainly not a barrier to education. Peter? Uh, tuition fees and maintenance grants. Uh, UKIP's long-term goal is to ab abolish tuition fees entirely, and we will seek to re-enact this as soon as economic conditions allow. Meanwhile, to help the poorest students now, we will immediately restore maintenance grants. Same as you. To plug, to plug the skills gaps in these areas, UKIP will abol abolish tuition fees for undergraduates uh, studying technology, engineering, science and mathematics. Students provided they work in their, in their discipline and pay tax in the UK for at least five years after they complete their degree, we will cover the cost of all tuition fees for medical students provided they commit to working within the Nas National Health Service for at least 10 out of the 15 years after they qualify. Just, I just wanted to point out that it was under the Tony Blair's government, the Labour government, that introduced tuition fees. Just throw it out there. Thank you. Uh, as I said before, the, uh, the Green Party has, uh, has always planned to abolish tuition fees. So it's great to see other parties taking that policy on board. We cannot live in a society where uh, your wealth or your parents' wealth decides what you do in your future. The loss uh, of the great doctors, great nurses, great people that have been to university and to get the job where they have. I, I'm lucky enough to be old enough that I got a grant and there was no such thing as the tuition fees that we had to pay. And I, my son now is at university and the debt is more like 50,000 because it's 9,000 for tuition fees, which the Conservative government, has, he's already paying interest, even though he's only on his second year. And I think the myth, the interest at the moment is 3.5%, which some people have a mortgage less than that. And it means in real terms that you pay, if you're uh, in the first uh, tax bracket, you will actually be paying more uh, than a higher earner because you'll be paying for 20 years 8% of your pay. So it's just not fair and we cannot do that to young people. Of course, all the stress, all the other factors that are involved with being burdened with a debt and also they sign the dotted line often before they're 18 because as you know, you'll you be 17 when you get make your place and you don't really understand a lot of the time how uh, horrible that debt is going to be. So we must, we must have free university for those that uh, meet the entry requirements. All right, thank, uh, you. thank you. Uh, now it's time for audience questions.
So if you have any questions to ask the candidates. Thank you. Um, Jackson, when you were asked about education then, you completely directed it in terms of money straight back to Labour. You didn't actually address what Conservative views on our tuition fees are. So please could you outline what, aside from tossing it back to Labour? Well, what the increase in tuition fees was introduced by the Labour government and it was carried through by the coalition government um, that the Lib Dems and the Tories were in government together. Um, I mean, statistics have shown um, since 2010 that increasing the school fees, um, tuition fees, have not sort of put off students. Don't school fees in St. Sorry, sorry, tuition fees have not put off students going off to university. They have this year, but it's gone down. Look, I think, I, I think one of the most retrograde things that happened in the last government was to take the support allowance away from the poorer students. It should have been a principle that when you had tuition fees, at least the cost of that was mitigated by supporting the poorer students. That didn't happen. Uh, the field of play has changed, and I think it's important now to give young people a chance. But we do tend to focus the education debate at that end of the spectrum. Uh, you know, my little boy's going to start uh, nursery this year. We've seen one in three Sure Start centres close in St Helens. The 30 hours free childcare pledge by the last government it doesn't seem to work here because we can't get the places and providers are stretched. So I think we need to look at education from the earliest years to not just through the university but people who want to return to education at a later date and lots of people in our community do because they've worked in uh, manual jobs or trades and they want to go back and, and get a qualification or indeed get a qualification that enhances the trade that they already have and we need to support all of those people. You've not mentioned uh, special educational needs. UKIP believes all disabled learners must have the legal right to attend either a mainstream courses a uh, course in the mainstream education settings or schools exclusively, exclusively tailored to their needs. It should be their choice to this end that we reverse the policy of closing special schools and ensure all other schools are accessible to dis disabled learners and that individual, individual support is in place for each child. We also want to uh, fund all secondary schools according to a single formula, meet first aid training and statutory requirements so people can obtain a basic life saving diploma resuscitation included. But you know, you know, Peter, if you funded schools under a single formula, that would mean that schools in St Helens, in Billings, where you live, in Newton, where I live, that would mean schools in St Helens would lose out significantly. So it's okay to, it's okay to read a national <coughs> pledge, but, but what about St Helens North? What about the community here? What about schools here? Well, because we, we would lose out under a single funding formula. We are, we are losing out at the moment, I agree with you there. Um, but uh, that is the Tory government playing against... But what would you do? You've said, you've said you support a single funding formula for schools. That means schools here would lose £9 million, £386 pounds per pupil. This school may lose 11 teachers and £416 pounds per pupil. Right. So that is not a formula that works for St Helens. It works for the, it works for the south of England. It doesn't work for here. Okay. It works for rich areas. It doesn't work for poor areas. Yeah. Some people might not like you, but still believe in Labour policies. But Jackson <laughs> says uh, that because he doesn't like Corbyn, uh, he shouldn't be with Labour. He should stand on his own. But he might like everybody else. Well, what a devastating insight into the state of our politics. That was, <laughs> such, that was such a good question. Look, let, let me answer that. Look, uh, you know, my, uh, my views on Jeremy, my relationship with Jeremy, some of the disagreements we've had have been uh, well publicised. This, this is a choice about the future of the country, but it's also a choice about who you want to represent you here locally. You know, I stand on real labour values, values of opportunities for young people, uh, fairness for working families, dignity for older people. Those are the labour values that I have that are unchanged. That's why I'm the labour candidate here in St Helens North, and that's why I've been proud to be an MP here over the last two years, and I hope to be the MP again after the 8th of June. But it's a fair, it's a fair and pretty devastating critique of the state of our politics and indeed our party. I think what you can take away is that you know five candidates here standing for their parties, you know, four of them believe in their party's values and beliefs. One of them doesn't. One of them doesn't believe in the Labour Party, in, in its leader. And you could ask the question, why doesn't he stand as independent if he feels so I know, strongly Jackson, about... I feel, uh, I, feel, I, feel, I feel quite comfortable with that because I, I would much rather be the local candidate for St Helens North 
than be trees than trees are made as local be, be candidate. Local candidate. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a yes man. I'm a straight talking, independently minded, community focused MP. I'm not. So I'm not a yes man. Tell me why you will not stand as an independent. Tell me why you will not stand as independent. Your trees are made. Your trees are made. Yes man. I believe in the values of the Conservative Party. Because I'm very clear. I'm very clear. You do not believe in the Labour Party. I'm watching this. This is this is this is what happens with Westminster politics. It's just Labour and the Tories slapping each other around, leaking stuff to the press, and no one's actually paying attention to what people want. This is, this is the Yabu politics of Westminster, and the only way that, no, no, I'm sorry, Connor, I'm sorry. The only way, the only way it's going to change, the only way it's going to change is if we all start treating the voters with a bit of respect. Let's just, let's lay back, you know, come on. I think we can all agree here that we don't like Jeremy Corbyn, all of us around here, right? So let's just, let's just move on, and let's talk about the policies that are going to affect St. Helens. Tom, look, in the last two years as an MP, I've been contacted 7,000 times by constituents. I've helped 1,500 people locally resolve problems that they've had. I've held 70 surgeries across the constituency, and I've attended 180 community events. So with the greatest of respect, Tom, please don't come here, having been an ex-councillor in the city of Liverpool and now living in Manchester, to tell me what local well, people want. Say, I, know, I know what local people want. I know what local people want because I listen to them. And I don't always agree with them. I've got to say, I've got to say, Connor, but I listen to them. That is twice that you've played a parochial argument. I've been knocking on doors in St. Helens, and actually the people of St. Helens would be absolutely ashamed that you're treating that parochial argument like that. And I'll say, Connor, you've only been local for two years. Can I just say, mine's not a question, it's a statement, actually. I read quite recently that we're given the vote. But do us, does our vote actually change the way we, everyday people, cha does it change our lives? If it did, then we wouldn't be allowed to vote. And when I sit here, I think that is quite true and it scares me. I'm just trying to think. I also think as well, going back, like our children, this is fantastic, because our children, our working class ch parents, these are not, they don't listen to you. It's not that they don't listen. The politics aren't inbred in our children like they are sort of conservative because you've got your, your education system is different the more you've you've got more luxuries you've you've they've got more smaller classes and politics is inbred in them so they become our next voters we need to start teaching our children this age what we can do we can't carry on the way we are we were i'm work I, my, me and my husband work and we work damn hard and our children will work hard but for what to support that top um, so layer, because that's how I, I feel. But I do, going back to, I think I will vote. Um, I'll bring my children so up to vote. Um, Whether it'll change my life, sorry, but I don't know. Is that sorry. Is, it's all right. Um, is that question like, what do you think the future of politics is going to be? Is that all around what your question is being? Because that's what you've just yes, said in yes, your statement. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. like to answer yeah, that? I'd, I'd like to say that I think that a lot of people in the Green Party feel like yourself. We need a new way. We cannot, once... Once you're fracked, the land can never be used again. Um, it's just full of a toxic cocktail of chemicals. Um, if with, we don't fix the air pollution, we're going to put even more stress on the NHS. With, and there's less uh, green spaces for you to enjoy, which is very popular. The, all the green spaces around the Sankey Valley Canal, everywhere is very well used and enjoyed. So, and that's something that doesn't cost anything. We cannot take that away from uh, the future generations or from ourselves. And this is why the Green Party here, and all of us, we've met many people as well, not as many as you, but obviously we're not on a salary. We're doing it all because Rachel. we care passionately Rachel, and you, believe Rachel. in the Green thank Party you. values. Does anybody else have to any be other views? Yeah, I think Everyone. we need to absolutely reform our political system completely. At the moment, politics is run by a select few people who donate, to, donate large sums of money to local parties and national parties, and that needs to change. We need to make MPs work harder. We need to bring back a recall, so if our MPs... Uh, regain, uh, uh, renege on their promises that we can call them back. It's not going to hurt our democracy if we make our MPs work harder. It's only going to help it. And you're right, people will become more engaged then because actually the MPs will be forced to listen and act. Yeah, that was a UKIP policy that we call the MPs. If you're not happy with them, you can vote to get him out. They have a local referendum to get a percentage of the vote. Uh, UKIP got nearly 4 million votes and got one MP. The proportional representation thinks we would benefit everybody. 
Uh, UKIP got nearly 4 million votes. That's more than the, the Liberal Party and the Green Party put together. Nicola Sturgeon got 1.8 million votes and got 53 seats. Doesn't seem fair, does it? So we really need to get onto that proportional representation. Look, I, I think the points that you made are, are very valid. Uh, whether it was in, in this school last year during the EU referendum when I came in for a Q&A with some very bright and very motivated students who asked hard questions, or this, or indeed in any of the other schools I visit, part of my role as an MPIC is bringing the democratic process to young people or people who haven't been involved in it before. Uh, Tom, all I'm trying to do is to to be straight about this. I was very clear, Jackson, when I was selected as a Labour candidate uh, here, not being from the area, there was justifiably a lot of scepticism. I made a series of promises, including the fact that I would live here, that my kids would go to school here, and that I would work hard in the community here. I've done that, but I didn't get to do it before the event. I get to do it now because I've put in the effort over the last, uh, over the last two years. I think what people in St Helens North from Newton to Billings to Rainford to Park, what they expect is for their local MP to stand up for them and to work and to work hard. It's a it's a difficult job. I make mistakes. I could always do better, I'm sure. But I, I am standing on my record here over the last two years and a positive offer for the future despite the tough times that we'll have ahead. Look, I, I, I hear what you say, and I just want to say that, you know, I'm not part of a political elite, you know, um, that's worked in politics. You know, I come from a working class family up the road in Lancashire. My parents own a B&B, uh, owned a B&B in Blackpool. Um, although I'm not local, I've been around long enough. I've worked around as a lawyer and um, in, in politics to be able to know that if elected as your MP, I'll be your voice in Parliament. I'll be your voice during the, the negotiations of Brexit. Um, does the political system need reform? Well, it always does. We can always make it better. But I don't believe now is the time to do so. You know, we have Brexit ahead of us, and that is the most important sort of decision and process that this country needs to, needs to process um, in, in the five years, two years ahead of us. So I will say this, is let's get Brexit out of the way, let's secure our economy, and then we can look at the other things that we would like improving in our lives. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. Uh, we thank you all for the debate today. Can we have a yeah. big round of applause for all the candidates? Remember, if you have the power to vote, you can vote on June 8th.